Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all well. Great to be with you this morning for a few minutes. This morning, we're in John chapter 11 and the miracles of Jesus. And just so everyone knows, after today, you need to put a bookmark in the book if you've got the book. If you haven't, don't worry. Tony Coulton tomorrow is starting a mini series as we as we approach Easter. We're going to be looking at an Easter theme, quite a big event um, for us Christians. So um, that'll be in Matthew chapter 21. But today, the last one and a great one to, to pause. We're, on, we're in John 11 and this is one of Jesus' most spectacular miracles. Not that the other miracles weren't spectacular, but this has been known as the, the pinnacle of, of the last miracle before Jesus himself goes to the cross. So Jesus displays his power over death and he comes to the grave where Lazarus has been in the grave for four days. And he, he says, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus springs back to life after four days and his body started to, to decompose. He springs back to life. Jesus has the power to bring people back to life. This is a real, a real event that occurred and a real death to life experience. But there's a spiritual application that we can experience resurrection power in our lives. Verse 25 says this. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? The raising of, Jesus, of, of Lazarus by Jesus was his last public miracle before he went to the cross. And it tells us a couple of things. Firstly, it's a preview of what is going to happen to Jesus. He was going to die, be buried and raised from the grave. But there's a spiritual application. As I said, we can experience resurrection power. We can experience a spiritual resurrection from moving from death to life spiritually. And somebody I know is speaking on John chapter 11 this Sunday. So... I'm going to look at the last few verses from 45 onwards. What happens after the resurrection of Lazarus? So after the miracle, some of the Jews believed and some of them ran off and told the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem. And they said, he's performing many miracles. If we let him keep doing this, everyone will believe in him. And then the high priest stood up and he said, it is better that one man dies for all the people. And verse 53, from that day on, the Jewish rulers planned to kill Jesus. Their jealousy led to them to plan to kill him. We need to guard our hearts if, if we're the jealous type. We need to be careful because jealousy can lead to murder, to hatred and to bitterness. This is what I want to remind us of today, that when, when you are born again, when we where we receive Jesus' offer of salvation, we become a child of God. We become adopted into his family. In 1 John, it, it says, he gave the right for them to become children of God. We become part of God's spiritual children. He adopts us into his family. But there's a problem. We've left one group to join another. We've left one kingdom to become part of God's kingdom. And the problem is that the other kingdom had a leader and he's called Satan and he's not happy. Why is he not happy that you've left his kingdom? The reason is why he's not happy is because when you've left his kingdom and you've joined God's kingdom, God's spirit comes into your life and the devil is defeated. It tells us that he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. He doesn't like being defeated. He doesn't like people walking around with a power that's more powerful than him. And it is a spirit. We live in a world that's physical, but there's a spiritual realm based around this physical realm that we can't see. But trust me, and believe me, it's there and it can try and influence and attack us. It says this in Ephesians, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. 
our enemy, the devil, he doesn't want you following God. He doesn't want you reading your Bible. He doesn't want you going to church. He doesn't want you in prayer and praying because the closer you become to God, the more filled of his power, the more defeated he will be. And he knows that the more damage you will do to his kingdom. If you're just a nominal Christian, if you don't read your Bible, if you're not practicing and living out your faith, he doesn't mind. He's fine, he just lets you carry on because he knows you're not doing any damage to him or his kingdom. But when you're on fire for God, when you're living for, for him with all of your heart, when you're following him and when you're, when you're praying and when you're witnessing and sharing the truth that God can transform anybody's lives, he hates it and he will bring the forces of darkness against us. And you might think that's crazy, but trust me, if you go out witnessing and you start telling all your friends and family and work colleagues, opposition will come. The devil hates it when people speak the truth that they can be set free by the love of God, that they can have peace in their hearts, that they can experience God's transforming power. He can't stand it because he knows that people will leave his kingdom and be set free by a God who loves them. What does he say in Ephesians 6? Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his great power. To be strong in the Lord is to be strong in your relationship with God. To be, have a close walk with him by spending time with him, reading his word, praying, living out your faith and walking in the power that God has. When God's spirit is in our lives, we can walk in power. What does he say? That he wants us to walk in the fullness of life. He, he loves us and he has an amazing plan. And we never have to be scared of the enemy because he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. We're in a spiritual battle. But when we are filled with God's spirit, the enemy is completely defeated. Can I pray before we go this morning? Heavenly Father, help us to live that full life that you offer us. Help us to be strong in the Lord and in your mighty power. Help us to grow in our relationship with you. Help us to know our identity as a child of the living God. And Lord, we thank you that he that is in us, the Spirit of God, is greater than he that is in the world. Lord, help us to walk in love, in kindness, in gent gentleness. And help us to be bold and courageous to share your love with people that don't know you yet. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. See you all soon.